Jesus said to his disciples, I'm telling you not to worry about your life and what you are to eat, nor about your body or what you are to wear. Surely life is more than food and the body more than clothing. Look at the birds in the sky. They do not sow or reap or gather into barns, yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not worth more than any of them? Can any of you, however much you worry, add one single cubit to your span of life? And why worry about clothing? Think of the flowers growing in the fields. They never have to work or spin. Yet I assure you, not even Solomon in all his royal robes was clothed like one of these. Now, if that is how God clothes the wild flowers growing in the fields, which are there today and sown into the furnace tomorrow, will be worked much more after you. You have so little faith. So don't worry. Do not say, what are we to eat? What are we to drink? What are we to wear? It is the Gentiles who set their hearts on these things. Your heavenly Father knows your needs them all. Set your hearts on his kingdom first and on God's saving justice and all the things will be given as well. So do not worry about tomorrow. Tomorrow will take care of itself. Each day has enough trouble of its own. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise Praise you, Lord Jesus My work over many, many years has been helping people discern what the will of God is. And I often say to them, the question is not about discerning the will of God so much as simply doing the will of God because so often we don't need to know what the will of God is, we just need to do it. Because if I knew what the will of God was, that I would be standing here now as a bishop, I would never have dared join the Carmelites. So it's often good not to know the will of God, but to have the disposition simply to live so that we might do the will of God. Today in Australia, we celebrate our saint, our one saint, whose life can very much be summed up in a number of virtues. The first virtue would be reliance upon providence, not dependence upon other things, which is a great virtue to have. Another is the simple focus on God, which stands in contrast to the focus on so many other things that we get caught up in. We tend to focus on and allow to determine our lives and thinking. And finally, for this great saint, a purity of heart, which enabled her to rely on providence and look towards God rather than look towards herself. And that's one of the foundations of purity of heart. And so not surprisingly, when her order was asked to give the gospel, which they thought was most representative of her, they chose this latter part of the sixth chapter of St. Matthew's Gospel. Don't worry. Depend upon God, because God provides all things. And in St. Mary MacKillop, we see a very good commentary and a life lived of this passage of St. Matthew. Let's hear what Jesus says. I'm telling you, do not worry about your life. See how God looks after all things. So set your hearts not on these things, but on the things of God. Know that if you set your heart on God, everything will be given. Because if you worry about tomorrow, it might never come. Because tomorrow will look after itself. Mary MacKillop, I think, is, is such a wonderful example of this lived. But let's now look at what these virtues mean. 
The reliance upon divine providence, I think, is, is a very difficult virtue because nobody naturally relies on divine providence because we're naturally brought up to rely upon ourselves. And as the Jesuits say, you must act as if everything depends upon yourself. That's what I was taught by them. But pray as if everything depends upon God. The problem is without that but pray, we live as if everything depends upon ourselves. And that's living in falsehood because everything is in God's hands. And if we look back on our lives, there's nothing that I could have done to change my present position. There's nothing that I could have done because I am the man that God has made me. My life has unfolded as God has unfolded it. And to think that I could have made a difference is sheer and absolute arrogant pride because everything is in God's hands. The problem is living as if that was the case. And so much of our time is caught up in trying to live as if everything depends upon me. And when I live like that, God doesn't have a part of my life. In fact, my life is me and me. I might say theoretically, ah, yes, but it's God is there but look and see how we live. And this is one of the things from today's gospel and part of the greatness of this saint, to be able to in fact live the truth that we say, that everything depends upon God. But to do that, the next virtue which we spoke about, which is implicit in today's gospel, must be in place. And that is that my focus, my reason, my purpose is not me, but God. And that also is very difficult because we have so many reasons and those reasons become the obstacles. They're the things that prevent us from loving. They're the things that prevent us from standing in integrity because it's this, this, this and this. As Jesus would say, it's about clothing, it's about food, it's about how long your life is. And Jesus is saying, it's none of these things but we live as if it was. Each of us has, as St. Teresa of Avila would say, I don't care, I know that everyone has something that they won't let go of. And until they're willing to let go of that, you cannot take that step in your, in your movement towards God. And the final virtue, which is purity of heart. Blessed are the pure in heart because they will see God. What is blessed about this saint? Because in purity of heart, she saw God in everything. She saw God and therefore she recognized the need. She saw God and therefore she recognized what little she could do in God's providence. What do we see? It requires the ability not to look into ourselves and see ourselves, but to look within ourselves and see the living God. Purity of heart is what enables us to see God. And that, I think, in terms of the three virtues that we find in this saint, is the most relevant and most important. That we begin in our lives as we learn to recognize, no, I'm not looking at God, I'm looking at myself. And to begin to see more and more clearly the living God. Firstly, within myself, so that I might see God outside myself in the people around me, so that I see people, not things, in the world around me, so that I see God in God's creation. And with that purity of heart, I've got the final virtue because I will see God.